Hi, I'm Kim Palmer, the founder of Clementine, and welcome to the Reboot Festival, which is our annual festival we hold at Clementine at the beginning, so January of every year. Uh, we now make all of the sessions available so that you can rewatch them at any time of the year because the content is just so amazing. So sit back, relax and enjoy. So um, to kick off, let me welcome um, Laurie Lowenberg, who's dialing in. She'll be popping up now. Hi, Laurie. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. I know. I'm so excited. I, I, before we actually went on air, I started already trying to ask you lots of questions about what different dreams meant. Um, but I, I want to hold my fire because I think you're probably going to cover some of these maybe more common dreams that come up. And I think there'll probably be lots of questions that people will have around kind of why this particular thing. Um, and even at the moment, why are people dreaming in certain ways? Because there seems to be some common themes coming out. Um, are you going to share some slides then, Laurie? I do. I have a lovely slide presentation that's going to help uh, everyone better understand their dreams, why we dream, what happens in the brain when we dream, and how our dreams are the most powerful part of who we are. Yeah, I'm good. I, I'm also, I, well, I'm going to hold off. I'm so, so many questions I want to ask. One thing I did want to say before you started, how did you get into the whole area of being a dream expert? Because it doesn't feel like one of those things when you're at school that you go, oh, I want to learn how to interpret dreams. Right. It's, it's, it's not something I even knew existed, <laughs> but... Long story short, I've always been very interested in my dreams. I can remember my dreams since I was two years old. So I would draw them when I got older. I would start writing them down in a journal. And it really wasn't until um, I was 19, and that's when my grandfather died. He's the first person close to me that ever died. So that was my first experience with death. And I got very depressed. And two weeks after his death, I had a dream where he and I were walking through a museum and I knew he was dead mm -hmm. and I asked him what it's like where he's at and he said I can't tell you that but what I can tell you is that it's very secure yeah. and then he gave me a hug and started to walk up the staircase and then I woke up and I could smell his old spice I still felt him around me mm -hmm. and that dream was so impactful that it propelled me to study dream psychology because I mm -hmm. wanted to know, why do we do this? What is it? What is the benefit of it? And then from mm -hmm. there, I just sort of formed a career out of this because they're really, this was way back in the 90s. No one was doing this at the time. There's a lot mm -hmm. more people doing it now and it's even being um, presented in psych courses and universities, finally. So it's really becoming more welcomed as an actual very beneficial um, psychology. Mm, that's fascinating. Um, I can't wait to start asking you in a really annoying way loads of questions about it. <laughs> so would you like me to go ahead and begin? That would be perfect Laurie. Yeah, are you launching? Um, and as I said we will, will, anyone wants to ask questions at any point just pop them in the chat and I'll yes. Okay, so understanding the dreaming mind. When we are dreaming, we are thinking on a much deeper, more insightful level than when we're awake. When we're dreaming, we're actually problem solving. It's just in a different language. Our dreaming minds are like a second brain that is speaking to us in codes, warning, helping, and guiding us through our constantly evolving situations in life. The subconscious mind through our dreams is trying to alert us to problems it wants to fix, to give us inspiration for goals it wants us to reach. The truth is our best thinking isn't done in the shower. It's done while we dream. In fact, we have a when we have a dilemma and we say, let me sleep on it, what we're really saying is let me dream on it. So when you pay attention to your dreams, you're able to understand them. You can absolutely change your life. So you may be thinking this sounds really great, but how does this work? So are about you, nine. Sorry, are you, are you in slideshow at the moment? I was just thinking um, it, we can actually see. Oh, you know, it probably would have helped if I did that. Can That's you see perfect. now? That's okay. <laughs> okay. So about 90 minutes into sleep, 
our brain when is when we enter REM dream sleep. And at that point, our brain releases a chemical through our brain stem, which actually paralyzes our skeletal muscles. This is a safety mechanism so we don't get up and act out our dream. So you're literally paralyzed while you're dreaming. Um, a lot of things happen at this point. This part of the brain right here is the prefrontal cortex. Part of the, the part of this that controls linear and rational thought shuts down. So this is why your dreams may seem to jump around and why really strange things like giving birth to a three-headed pig seems perfectly normal. Um, also, the very center of the brain, uh, the amygdala, which is this little part right here. This is the emotional center of the brain and it's very highly active during dreaming, which is why your dreams may be very intensely frightening or, or hilarious or, or very, very frustrating. This all happens every 90 minutes throughout the night we dream. These dark blue areas, this is REM dream sleep. And as you can see, with each session of REM sleep as we go through the night, our dreams get longer and longer. So your very first dream of the night will be like five, seven minutes. The next cycle of dreaming is a little bit longer until that very last cycle of dreaming right before we wake up. This cycle can be 45 minutes to an hour long. All of these dreams that we get throughout the night aren't just dreams. They're actually messages we're sending ourselves about ourselves in order to help ourselves. Um, so people will say, well, if dreams mean something, then why don't they just say it? Well, as I explained, our brains are working differently during REM sleep. So we're not thinking in linear thought and we're not thinking in words. Instead, we're thinking in symbols and metaphors and figures of speech. So if you think about it, you probably have used quite a few metaphors in your communications today already. For example, you know, you might have said, hey, it's raining cats and dogs out there. Mm -hmm. So you could just say it's raining or you could say it's raining cats and dogs. That lets the other person know, oh, it's raining really, really hard. I need to prepare for that. You may have even said, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. So that would tell someone, if you just say, I'm hungry, well, I'm hungry. But if I tell you I'm so hungry I can eat a horse, then you know, you know what? She's so hungry, I need to give her a lot of food. So look at these metaphors in picture form. They look like a dream, don't they? This is how dreams work. They bring metaphors to life. Our dreams are, in a nutshell, a metaphor for what's going on in our life right now. In dream psychology, though, we call these dream metaphors archetypes. And so there's quite a few common ones that we all seem to get all across the board that have a pretty common meaning for all of us across the board. So I'm going to go over a few of them, which I bet you you've had. And I'm going to explain what they mean and how they're a metaphor for what's going on in your life right now. The falling dream. This is my artwork, by the way, I do that. Okay, so the falling dream is super common, and it's a metaphor. You're going to get this dream when something in your life is going in the wrong direction, when something or someone has let you down, when you had high hopes and the, they fell through, um, when, when something is causing you to feel heavy. Uh, this is also a common dream for people who suffer from depression. They'll get a falling dream as a heads up from their body that they're about to fall into another, about to fall into another bout of depression. So that is a metaphor for things are not going in the right direction in your life right now at the moment. Another super common one is the flying dream. I also do this picture. So uh, the flying dream is a metaphor for when something in your life is feeling great, when you're reaching a high goal you've set for yourself, when you're feeling empowered, uh, when, when you break free from something that was previously heavy and weighing you down. The flying dream is a metaphor for feeling wonderful and in control. The being chased dream. 
this dream is a metaphor for when you are avoiding something in your waking life, when you're in a situation you want to get away from. Uh, if you're, this is a super common recurring dream. So if you have the personality type that tends to avoid confrontation at all costs, you're probably going to get this dream a lot. Um, so this is, again, telling you um, right now in your life, you're running from an issue that you need to face. Your avoidance is like being chased by your issue. And then the good old naked in public dream. I get this one a lot. I got this dream the night before I was ever on, the first time I was ever on national television. So this dream is a metaphor for when you feel like you're in a situation in your real life where all eyes are on you. When something's causing you to have a lot of concern about how others perceive you. When you feel you're being scrutinized, tested, or judged. The interesting thing I've noticed, though, about this naked in public dream um, is that usually in this dream, we're the ones freaking out about our nakedness, but no one else in the dream seems to care. And I have found in my research that the reason why is because this is the way the subconscious mind is trying to show us that um, we're the only ones giving energy and thought to this issue and that no one else in our life is really giving it a second thought, so we need to get over ourselves. And then finally, another super common dream is the death dream. This one feels really, really real. And this one can freak us out the most because we may dream of our own death, the death of our child, the death of our, our partner, someone we care about. Now, remember, dreams are metaphors. They are symbols. You do not look at them literally. If you do, you, number one, you're going to miss the message. Number two, you're going to freak yourself out. So when you get the death dream, it is a metaphor. It is a symbol for something in your life that is changing or coming to an end. Death is the end of life, but to the dreaming mind, death is the end of life as you now know it. So a really common death dream, for example, is we dream our child dies. That's an awful dream to experience, but it is a metaphor for the end of that phase of life that your child is going through. So maybe they're no longer an infant and they're a toddler uh, when they start feeding themselves, when they learn to ride a bike, when they start school, when they start dating, all these phases of life end. And when that happens, we tend to get the death dream. It's the way we are mourning uh, the loss of that part of their life. But it also helps us let go so that we can embrace the new phase of life that's coming. So if there are any questions yet, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I can go over the five rules to understanding your dreams. Um, it's interesting. I think most people are just saying, um, well, actually, one of one of the comments is about the dream where you're trying to run and move, but you're stuck. So that kind of panicky feeling that you get yes. you can't move. Okay. That dream is usually connected to when you aren't making enough movement in some area of your waking life. Maybe you've got a project you're working on and it just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Or maybe you're in a relationship that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Um, the dream is showing you your inability to move to let you know you need to change up what you're doing. You need to make different movements in order to move this issue, this project, this relationship along. Mm. And another one, actually, um, there's a few here, actually, um, dreams of being pregnant or having a baby, you know, when you're ah. not pregnant. Yeah. The opposite of the death dream, dreams of being pregnant or having a baby when you aren't trying to get pregnant or having a baby, and it seems to come out of nowhere. That dream is caused by something new happening in your life. So if, it, if the dream, if you're pregnant in the dream, then that means this new element in your life is in the growing and development stage. Something is in the works. This is a really common dream when uh, you go back to school and you're working on a degree, for example. That's something that's in the works. Um, you may get it when you're, you, you're starting a new side hustle, for example. That's something that's beginning to, to grow and develop, something that's in the works. Then when you have a baby, when you give birth in a dream, 
that is uh, connected to this thing you've been working on finally coming to fruition. Maybe you got your degree. Maybe the relationship, you know, maybe finally you got that ring. You know, it's the beginning of a new life for you. Mm. And, and one more, because we'll do some more at the end as well, actually. Okay. Um, was around a, a dream where you're supposed to be going somewhere, but you just can't get there. So you're getting distracted and stressed that you're not getting, so you're trying to get to a destination, but you can't reach it. Okay, so so again, dreams are going to be on about what's happening right now in your life. So when you get this dream, ask yourself what goal, the destination in your dream represents a goal you're trying to reach in real life. So, so for example, maybe you're trying to lose 10 pounds before your high school gradu- uh, reunion um, and you're not losing the weight. You're probably going to get that dream where you can't get where you want to go. So it's similar to the dream where you can't you can't move your body or your legs. This is very similar, and your subconscious is showing you um, you need to change things in order to get movement and get where you want to go. Mm. Can I do one last one actually, just quickly? Because oh, yes, um, somebody um, Talat has said, "What what does it mean if you dream of of the dead?" Well, I mean, you mentioned about dreaming about your granddad. Um, yes. And I think it can be different with people that you know that have passed or people okay. that you don't know. Um, okay, so good question. So now I am a believer in the fact that those that have passed on can communicate with us while in the dream state. This cannot be proven yet, but there's a lot of experiences I've had and, and hundreds and hundreds of people that have told me their experiences that lead me to believe that, that that it is possible. And if you think about science tells us anything that exists is an energy and travels in waves, um, light waves, sound waves, radio waves. Um, so if consciousness survives bodily death, it exists as an energy and will also travel in waves. When our brain works in waves, so when we go to sleep with each stage of sleep, our brain waves slow down in frequency, and then in REM dream sleep, perhaps that is the perfect frequency where we can tune into the consciousness of our loved one, like a radio, and communicate. Um, that being said, that doesn't mean every time you dream of someone that has passed on is a communication dream. You can usually tell the difference. The dreams you have that are communication dreams feel different. They're very, very real. When you wake up from them, you still feel the presence of your loved one around you. You can smell them. You can feel them. It's just different. And usually in those dreams, they're they're beautiful. They look healthy. And they communicate something like, I'm fine. Everything's going to be okay. I'm still here. The dreams we have of people that have passed on that are not communication dreams, they... The the person in our dream may be acting different. They... um, maybe doing something different that there's weird symbolic things going on and so in that case when we dream of them they're not really playing themselves anymore but rather symbolize a part of the self and then we're going to learn in the five rules that everything in your dream is a part of you so for example if you dream of your mother that is passed on she may not be playing herself but rather represent your own role as a mother so pay attention to what she's doing in the dream, what she's saying in the dream, how she's behaving in the dream. That will likely correlate to how you're feeling about your role as mom and what's going on in your life as a mom. So I hope I explained that well. That was great. Okay, so we'll go over these five rules to understanding. Take notes, people. Take notes. This is going to help you figure out your dreams from now on. Okay, so. Your dreams are always going to be about you or something that directly affects you. And this is the thing about dreaming. Dreams are our own creation of our own mind. So everything in our dream is about me, 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 or something that absolutely directly affects me right now. So our dreams have a way of presenting ourselves to us in the form of different people or in the form of even objects or creatures. Um, So, for example, say you dream of this kid from third grade that you haven't seen since then. Why is he in your dream? He represents some part of your personality. So ask yourself, what what stands out to me about him? Of those words you choose to describe him, apply them to you. I'll give you an example using the third grade kid. 
I had a classmate in third grade, never spoke up, never rose his hand. He was the shyest person I've ever known in my life. That stands out about him to me. When he shows up in my dream, I know he represents the part of me that isn't speaking up in real life. So try to identify yourself in the characters in your dream. Try to identify yourself in the animals in your dream. Um, if, if you're dreaming of a, an attacking dog, how are you being that way in real life? Or is someone directly around you acting like that attacking dog and attacking you verbally in some way? So try to identify yourself in the dream. Your dreams are always going to be connected to yesterday. Our dreams are a continuation of our thoughts from the day, that, that conscious dialogue we're having with ourselves. We wake up, we're talking to ourselves. We're driving to work, we're talking to ourselves. We're loading the dishwasher, we're talking to ourselves. As we drift off to sleep, we're talking to ourselves. And so anything that happened that day that's on our mind and that we talk to ourselves about, we're going to continue to talk to ourselves about it in the dream state, in the form of a dream. So whatever happens in your dream, see if it seems similar to something that happened from yesterday. And you'll find that it usually does. The emotion you feel in a dream is directly connected to that same emotion in your real life. Emotions are super important to pay attention to. Emotions are heightened in the dream state, but they're not a random emotion. If you're crying in your dream, for example, then you need to ask yourself, what right now in my real life upsets me? What makes me sad in my real life? If your dream is very, very frustrating, and it's one of those dreams where, you know, you can't find your class in school. In your whole dream, you're trying to find your class and you're frustrated. Ask yourself, what's going on right now? What's the most frustrating thing to me right now? That's what your dream's trying to help you with. The emotion is really important to pay attention to. The conversations in your dream are really a conversation with yourself. Now, this is an interesting thing that I've recent. I've been studying dreams and, and doing professional dream analysis for 25 years, and this is something I've only recently realized, is that the conversations in your dream or a conversation with yourself, anything that is said to you in a dream is something you're saying to yourself and anything you're thinking in the dream. When something's going on, what you're thinking about that while in the dream is going to directly correlate to that same exact thought about something going on in your real life. So take special note of anything said in a dream and then see if you can connect it to something going on right now in real life. It, whatever said will make sense when you apply it to real life. And then finally, the point at which your dream ends naturally as opposed to the alarm waking you up or a dog barking and waking you up. The point at which your dream is naturally is where the most important part of the message is. Like a story, the moral typically comes at the end. Same with dreams. So the point at which your dream leaves you with is the point your subconscious mind wants you to ponder and figure out and, and take with you. So, for example, a, a lot of dreams may... You may wake up before it's resolved. That's because it's connected to an issue in your waking life that's yet to be resolved. Your dream wants you to ponder that and figure out how to resolve it. So I hope you took these notes. I'll, should I leave these up or should I go back to full screen with me? Um, maybe leave them up for a second. Okay, okay Laurie. Okay. I had a, that was amazing. And actually, one of the comments that we had immediately in the chat was, I can't wait to sort of dream tonight. because Oh, yay! It adds a whole other dimension to it, doesn't it? Um, and one question I've got here is, does it mean anything if you have the death dream and it's always a specific way you die? So say if you dream of, I don't know, getting shot, for example, does it mean it relates to the same thing in your life coming to an end as you know it? So I suppose um, some, sometimes, I mean, I've had them actually, dreams where somebody's following and chasing me and then they shoot me and I die. Or is it the method is not really the message? It's more about the fact that no. you're... Everything in your dream is important. Nothing's random. Specifics matter. So the way you were killed in a dream, the weapon used in a dream, all of that has a meaning and is connected to something specific in your waking life. You mentioned a gun. Guns are typically symbolic of someone's emotional weapon. Someone using a gun against you would indicate someone in your real life is shooting out their mouth at you 
the bullets are the emotionally wounding remarks. So if you keep getting shot in a dream, then that's a good indication. Oh, and also remind me, I want to talk about why we get recurring dreams. That's a good indication that you keep becoming the victim of someone's criticism. The death would mean you need to put an end to that or mm -hmm. put an end. You need to kill off the way you allow yourself to be a victim. Um, when you make that change, the dream will stop. We've also got one um, from Carolina saying, um, what about a dream that you're suddenly taking an, an exam and you're not prepared for it? Um, and even like she said, she graduated years ago. Is yeah. that a bit of that fear of failure dream, isn't it? Well, again, the specifics matter. So the back at school dream, and there's a lot of variations to the back at school dream and probably missing, uh, not being prepared for the test is the most common one. I found that the back at school dreams tend to be connected to something going on with your career or your job. School holds the same, di it's our first job and it holds the same dynamics. You got to be on time. You need to be prepared, have done your homework. Um, you're being tested and judged and you want to move on up to the next level. Same with school. So when you are not prepared for a test, ask yourself, first look at the emotion you're not prepared. Where in real life do you feel the same way? What's coming up in your real life that you're, you don't feel you're ready to handle? Where do you feel like you're being tested and scrutinized? Where do you need to make the grade and really show you know your stuff? Um, usually, again, it's going to have to do with work or career. Maybe it's evaluation time. Maybe you've got to learn a new software or something like that. You're feeling tested. You don't feel ready for it. So what you take from the dream is, okay, this is how I'm feeling. I need to make sure I'm over-prepared so I can totally pass with flying colors and impress the pants off whomever is causing me to feel scrutinized. Mm. And Laurie, what about um, before we came on air, actually, we were discussing, and, and Faye's actually said here, dreaming more during lockdown or during the last lockdown. I know anecdotally I've heard lots of people saying that they're having more vivid dreams or or the sense that they're dreaming more now that we're spending more time um, in the UK anyway in indoors you know and not going yes. out. Yes so that has been an amazing phenomenon the pandemic dreams. I was actually on Sky News a couple of weeks ago talking about this. So the reason why the pandemic dreams have been such a phenomenon is that people are suddenly remembering, remembering their dreams when they didn't used to, or people who normally do remember their dreams, their dreams are longer and more vivid. Now, here's why. If you remember back all the way back to the REM stages, you know, each stage of REM is longer than the other. Now that we're in lockdown and so many of us aren't able to go to work, we don't have to wake up to an alarm, jump out of bed, start our day. We're spending more time in the morning when we wake up. We're able to reach this final stage of REM sleep, REM dream sleep, that we weren't able to get before because the alarm clock would go off about right here. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So... Now we're getting this long cycle of REM we never used to get. And we're not jumping out of bed and starting our day, so we're able to remember this. And so that it's, it's actually an amazing thing. This is one of the few wonderful things that has come out of the lockdown and the pandemic, is that people are now paying attention to their dreams. Even though the dreams may sometimes be frightening and disturbing and gross, even those dreams are good for you. So that's why we're getting these dreams and the pandemic dreams are such a phenomenon. Um, and also we had a question, a couple of people actually coming forward about having um, sort of sex dreams about people. Ooh. Dreaming that you're kind of, but maybe with somebody that you wouldn't, you know, in real life, yeah. you wouldn't entertain the idea. Um, so perhaps, I don't know, a colleague or, you know, if you were at school, yes. it might have been a teacher. That was another example. Um, what does What does it mean? Because it's kind of, Sometimes you can wake up. I know if you have those kind of dreams, even if you've just kissed somebody and then you see that person in a completely yes. different light and you're like, what What the heck is, does that mean? You know? It can be very hard to go into work the next day. Mm. It can make you run into the shower with a bottle of Clorox to clean yourself from that awful <laughs> experience. Mm. But remember, dreams are metaphors. They are not literal. So sex isn't about a physical union you want 
but rather a psychological union you need. So sex is the ultimate connection, it's two bodies connecting. So the dreaming mind will use the act of sex to symbolize some sort of merger or connection that needs to or has recently happened in your real life. So using um, the coworker, for example, if, if you have a dream of having sex with the coworker, there's something about the, it's not that you desire that person, but something about them you desire. So maybe it's the coworker who closes all the deals. That would be the quality you want to connect with and merge into your own behavior. The sex dreams we have usually show us what we lack. So there's something about your partner in the dream that would, some quality, some behavior, something about their life that you desire for yourself and that your subconscious feels would be very good for you to merge into your own behavior. Mm, so interesting. Um, I'm just going to do um, another one from Tamara with saying, I always dream of my old childhood home. What is the meaning behind yes. those things? Okay, so it's, and, and me too, mm. all the time. So you're not alone. So the childhood home, again, it's not about, it's symbolic. So it's not about the home, but more about who you were when you lived there. So the childhood home could, if you had a great childhood, wonderful parents, felt loved, um, then in that case, the childhood home would represent that need to feel secure and things taken care of for you and, and being carefree. Um, so you will dream of the childhood home when e either you're in a situation that feels like that or you need to feel like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you dream of a home you used to live in, maybe it's not your childhood home, but it's a home you used to live in. What was your life like when you lived there? What were you like when you lived there? Then apply that to now. Do you need to bring that back? Or is something going on right now that feels the same way? Mm. Um, I'm going to do, I'll do one more actually, which is just Paloma was saying, what about places you don't recognize? So if you think about the childhood home, but if you're just in having a dream where you're in a completely unfamiliar environment, is it about the sort of sensational feeling that that place is giving you, that there's some clue there? So the settings of dreams, we usually represent the different areas of our life or where we are in a particular situation. If you're in a setting that while in the dream you realize it's unfamiliar and you don't know how to navigate it then that would indicate that in your real life somewhere in your real life you're in what you might call foreign territory um, and you're in a situation you don't know how to navigate it feels very unfamiliar to you so if it's unfamiliar you're aware it's unfamiliar in the dream then there's somewhere in your real life that also feels unfamiliar that you have to get used to and learn how to navigate mm. and finally we're gonna because I just had a question actually which was around can you sort of dictate a little bit what you dream of because you know a couple of people have been saying oh I'm really looking forward to going to going to sleep and and it is true to say that sometimes you have dreams which you wake up and you feel really great you know you feel reassured or you feel safe or you feel excited or it's just you almost want to stay asleep yes um, can, can you because you were saying that, you know, obviously as you're falling asleep, you're kind of your thoughts and your processes are going through your head. So can you can you shape any of the dreams that you're going to have by trying to yeah. think of certain things just before you go to sleep? You can. You can. It's, it's not it, it's called dream incubation where you decide I want to dream about this particular person or I want to go here in my dream or I want to experience this in my dream tonight. You can. Now, it's not guaranteed, but you can raise your odds of being able to dis shape your dream by um, obsess about it all day long. Because remember, whatever's on your mind the most during the day is very likely what your dreams will be addressing at night. So obsess about, say you want to dream about Brad Pitt. Great. Obsess about him all day long. Talk about him. Have a picture of him on your desk. Watch a movie. Have conversations about him. Um, and then as before you go to sleep, write out the actual act of writing it out is super important. It's like pressing enter on your computer, write out the scenario you'd like, um, 
you know, let your inner romance novelist come out and write out something saucy. Write it out. And then turn out your light, go to sleep, play it in your mind as you're drifting off. Odds are good. You'll get a dream about it. Mm. If it doesn't work the first night, do it again the next. Give yourself a week. You'll eventually get some part of the dream that you want. Wow, that's amazing. I think quite a few people might be doing the old uh, Brad Pitt this evening. Yes, <laughs> have fun with it. There are no rules in dreamland. Yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted to say thanks a lot, Laurie. Um, if people wanted to follow you, you're on Instagram. What's, sorry, what's your Instagram handle as well, just in case people want to find out more about you? Did I just um, mess up my screen? Uh, no, we've, well, we've just gone back out of the slide uh, thing. Okay. So there you are, you're back on again now. Okay, so um, my Instagram is, is funny. It's WTF, as in Frank, WTF underscore did I just dream? Yeah. And then my uh, Twitter is the dream expert, at the dream expert. And that's also how you can find me online. Just Google dream expert, and I'm the first one that comes up. Okay, that's perfect. Well, I think people will definitely be looking into dreams um, and probably getting in touch with you. You must get really like every time you go to somebody's dinner party, you must be like, oh, can I just say that I'm not going to be talking about anyone's dreams tonight, please? Can I just log out of that? Um, I'm very popular at parties, yes. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Well, thanks so much, Laurie. Um, that was fascinating. And um, it was really, it was interesting to hear that there's so much recurring kind of dreams that we have as well and symbolism. Um, thanks so much for watching the reboot session today. There's plenty more on offer. So just check out the whole catalogue. Thanks.